To provide science-based information through active community engagement to those hardest hit by the COVID-19 pandemic, that is the mission of the NIH's Community Engagement Alliance, or SEAL. And here to talk a little bit more about what that alliance is doing are the directors of the alliance, Dr. Gary Gibbons and Dr. Eliseo perez Stable. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. So let's talk about the origin of SEAL. Why was the creation of this alliance necessary? Well, as everyone remembers, uh, certainly back in sort of March of 2020, uh, we were seeing the impact of probably a once in a century pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was uh, clearly apparent uh, that it was disproportionately affecting certain communities, mm -hmm. uh, particularly underserved communities, communities of color. And I still remember uh, uh, the weekend we got a call from Dr. Francis Collins, the NIH director. I think it was July 4th weekend. <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, we weren't talking about barbecues, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, in recognition of that challenge, uh, and as part of the NIH response, uh, there was an appreciation that we, we probably had a gap. Um, we had obviously set up things to understand the science of the virus and clinical right. trials, uh, but uh, we needed something to do for these communities. And uh, he turned to uh, myself and Eliseo, uh, given the history of our institutes in doing community-engaged research, uh, to see what we could do to, to mount an effort. And so how does SEAL tackle that problem? Well, there are a cadre of scientists who have been doing this work for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. It just has been smaller ep efforts, you know, on behavior change, on cardiovascular risk, on cancer screening, things of that type. So we called on them and said, we need you. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> we don't know where we're going to get the money. We don't know how much money we're going to get, and we don't know what we're going to do, but we need you to step up and, and respond to this. We need to do something about this and every single one of them responded. So since you've created SEAL, what have you learned about what are some of the best practices when it comes to disseminating information? Well, I think, uh, uh, as Dr. Perestablis mentioned, I think one of the challenges in that space was that there was a lot of misinformation uh, and um, a lack of awareness of, you know, who's most at risk, why, which communities, uh, and, uh, and intrinsically there, there, there may have been some sense of uh, does this really affect me? Uh, and uh, it, it was important to leverage those long-standing partnerships that uh, Dr. Elisea uh, Persabu mentioned um, in identifying uh, trusted messengers and, and, and partners uh, that were embedded in communities that really could speak to those networks. Might be a uh, faith-based community, um, uh, the local pharmacist or primary care doc, uh, and really getting to that ground level. There was already a lot of, you know, public services announcements and our good friend, you know, uh, uh, Tony Fauci <laughs> giving announcements, but, but what we found it was really important to get to people where they are uh, and speak to them in a way that resonates. And so uh, that was something that these experienced community-engaged researchers understood. And do you feel like after having identified those key messengers, those trusted messengers, that some progress has been made on that front? Absolutely. And right. not only going to the local community and have the local person be the, the, the one delivering the message, which is not something that was being done at the beginning when we started, but also how the professional communities in both African American and Latino and other groups really stepped up and created, uh, way, you know, was it be uh, videos and we're writing articles and we're just really out there to say we've got to defend ourselves, we've got to participate in these studies. Uh, and I think that we've seen now that actually the vaccination rates are not different between white Americans, Latino, Latino Americans, and African Americans. They're about the same, at least, you know, three dose level that is being used by CDC to define that. All right, well, Dr. Gibbons, Dr. Fred Stavley, thank you both so much for your time today and congratulations on the Alliance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.